All right. Good morning. We're live. Here we go. We're going to start the series off. Just a closer walk with the series. This is part one. Welcome. Um, we're going to open with uh, a song from the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book, as we always do, number 319. Just a closer walk with thee. It's good to see you. Just a closer walk with thee. 319. <laughs> now, I'm not the best at singing this, so you're going to have to sing along with me to drown out my bad singing. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, let me walk close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be Through this world of toil and snares If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely, oh, to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Amen. We're beginning our Closer Walk with Thee series today. <laughs> um, if you have a King James Bible, our opening reading is going to be in the book according to St. John. The Gospel, excuse me, according to St. John chapter 8. Chapter 8, if you want to turn there. <clears throat> We're going to read uh, starting in verse 47 through the end. The Bible says, John chapter 8, verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own, or excuse me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. 
And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters. It's Sean Elvis. It's good to see you. In today's video, we're beginning our uh, series, A Closer Walk with Thee, um, where I'm going to uh, be teaching through the life of Jesus. But I'm going to do things a little bit different since Christmas is coming up. Um, I'm going to be going through the life of Jesus backwards. So I'm going to be starting at the end of Jesus' life. And we're going to, um, and then by, uh, by the time we get to Christmas, we'll be at the birth of Jesus. So uh, we're going to go backwards, a little bit different. Um, anyways, we're going to begin at the, uh, like I said, at the end of Jesus' life. And we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. But to kick off this series for today's video, we're going to talk about how there really is no uh, beginning to Jesus. There is no end to Jesus because Jesus is God and God is eternal. So when I was uh, preparing for this message, I kept thinking, how can I go back to the beginning when there is no beginning? There is no end. Um, so we're going to take a look at a few scriptures today. And this is going to be more of a teaching series rather than a preaching series because um, we're going to just be learning uh, a little bit more about Jesus and his life and remind ourselves the highlights and the high points of um, all the various uh, uh, different stories that uh, take place uh, specifically in the Gospels. It's not going to be an in-depth series, but I'm, I'm going to try, try to basically just cover the basics. So with that, let's just jump right in. Um, John chapter 8, uh, our opening reading, uh, if you're already there, if you have a King James Bible. That's where we're going to be at for a while. Um, I just want to reiterate and highlight verse uh, 58. Verse 58, which says, or Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am, Jesus says. Now, the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees were basically the church leaders of Jesus' time period. And they were questioning Jesus because they were so drunk with power, you know, they didn't want Jesus coming along and stripping away the power from them. Because Jesus was was teaching so so much Bible and so much doctrine that he's he's beginning to expose the corruptness in the church and and expose the hypocrisy of the church leaders. Now Jesus' intent wasn't to cause any harm. Of course, Jesus was sinless, but he was teaching what was right. He was saying what, uh, what what needed to be said. And it was offending the Pharisees, the leaders of their day. And he tells them personally, hey, I knew Abraham. I knew personally the father Abraham. I spoke with him. I talked to him. And they laughed at him. The Pharisees laughed at Jesus and said, you're too young to know Abraham. Abraham is, it was from way back in the day, way, uh, uh, you're too young to possibly know Abraham. And look how Jesus answers in verse 58. He says, uh, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, I remind you that Abraham, Father Abraham, lived hundreds of years ago, thousands, maybe thousands of years before this, um, so this statement is remarkable. It's a, it's a statement where Jesus said, hey, even before Abraham was, I was there. I am. He said, I pre-existed Abraham. Okay. Now, that, that's a remarkable statement um, where Jesus is basically testifying that he's God, that uh, <laughs> he, there is no beginning to Jesus. He said, even before Abraham, I already was there. Now, let's go backwards in John. Let's flip over to John chapter 1. Flip over to John chapter 1. And I wanted to look at verses 1 through 5 here. And I want you to notice uh, the capitalization in the word, uh, in, the, in the W in the word, word. <laughs> so we're going to read uh, first, uh, excuse me, uh, Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. 
says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice that capital W. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This passage here is is describing Jesus Christ. Uh, And like I said, I want you to notice that capital uh, word W, that's that's talking about Jesus, the word. And... um, I'll prove it to you if you look down, skip down to verse 14. It says, And the Word was made flesh, capital W, Word, and dwelt among us. And he beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus was the one who was, um, if you go back to, uh, or excuse me, this is, uh, if you remember Jesus, he was born of God, right? He was not born of blood. Like if you go back to verse 13, it says, we were born of, uh, of blood, but Jesus was not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So this is talking about Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the word. Jesus was in the beginning with God. Jesus was God. And Jesus became flesh, dwelt among us. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that um, God, the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of the New Testament. Now, um, I don't I don't claim to understand God completely. I don't think anybody can make that claim. Um, but and this series is not going to be me explaining how uh, everything about God, because I, I don't know everything about God or Jesus. I don't think anybody does. But what I do know is that there are three aspects to God or three various forms in which God appears to us or um, manifests himself to us. One of those is God the Father. The other is God the Son, Jesus, and the, and the third is uh, um, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost, if you will. And, and we're going to take a look at each uh, three of these, and we're going to look at um, some scriptures supporting this, uh, this teaching and explain how Jesus is the everlasting God. He's one and the same, and there really is no beginning or end to Jesus. And uh, So let's look at some scriptures, and then we'll be done. Uh, Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. So um, it's one of the last chapters of the the Gospel of Matthew. If you just go to the Mark and flip over, it's the last chapter of Matthew. Uh, Matthew 28, starting in verse 18. The Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus tells us these three names that we're to baptize people in the name of. He says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So there's three different names that we're dealing with here. Let's go back to John chapter 15, or excuse me, John chapter chapter, uh, 10. We're going to go to John chapter 10. Um, I should have told you <laughs> we're going to be in John quite a bit today. Uh, but look at verse uh, ver- verse 27 in John chapter 10. The Bible says, uh, Jesus says, or we'll, we'll read 25 too. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, and look at verse 27. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Look at verse uh, 29. My Father, which gave them uh, to me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Here's another teaching where Jesus is separating himself from the Father. He's, 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 he's giving us a, a different form of God, if you will. Now, there's a teaching out there that some people believe that Jesus and, and God the Father are the same person. They're one and the same. Um, I'm not going to get into the, It's called the Oneness Doctrine. I'm not going to get into this uh, too much in, in this series. I just wanted to kind of briefly touch on it. Um, like I said, God is way above my, my comprehension. 
Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's uh, even possible to fully comprehend an eternal, all-powerful, all-knowing God that's everywhere at all times. But I, I will say this, I do believe in some kind of separation between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Because right here, you know, Jesus is talking about uh, God the Father, and he, he and he's, he's kind of separating um, himself with the Father in a sense. Um, but but I will say this, that I, I do believe that there is only one God. Jesus is God. God the Father is God. They're somehow intertwined in one along with the Holy Ghost. But it's all one God. You know, they just manifest themselves in different ways. I, I can't explain it. It's way above my pay grade. Um, but the reason I believe this is because... The Bible talks about these different manifestations. Let's uh, let's keep let's look at another passage in John. Go over to John 16, John chapter 16, and um, I'm going to show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. Jesus says in uh, John 16 verse 25, Jesus says, "These things have I spoken unto you in proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall." No more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came, for, I came forth from the Father, and am coming to the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father." His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered, <laughs> Jesus answered them and says, Do ye now believe? And then he goes on, uh, but, but my point here is, is um, Jesus is describing uh, the Father in, in the third person, kind of, you know, he, meaning he's talking about God the Father as, as if he's someone different from himself, you know, and, and, uh, and he's saying, I'm going to my Father. I came from my Father. I was sent by my Father. And, and, he, and, and, and he's telling his disciples that basically, hey, I'm God, right? I'm not talking to you in a parable. I'm telling you straight up right now, I came from the Father, I'm God, I came from heaven. So um, Jesus is not only uh, proving his deity here, that he came from the beginning, he will be there in the end, but he's also separating himself from the Father. Uh, so I don't know, just try to wrap your, your head around that as best you can. Um, there's one more verse I wanted to look at. Let's go back to Genesis. So I think we're going to come back to John, so don't lose your place there. But we're going to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And, and I wanted to show this to you um, about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want you to notice how in verse 2 here that we're going to read that the Holy Spirit, the capital S in Spirit, is also capitalized. Uh, let's read um, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. There was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Now, the, the Spirit, like I said, is a capital S there. Now, I believe that's talking about the Holy Spirit. So basically, in the beginning, before God created anything, the Holy Spirit was there, Jesus was there, God the Father was there, of course, who spoke and said, let there be light. Um, now, you could go back to the original Hebrew um, and look at this, and you could see, and you can go out through all, all the Bible and see uh, the different ways in which God was written. The name of God, you know, you have Jehovah God, uh, Yahweh, um, talking about God the Father, and you have uh, different names for Jesus, Yeshua. Now, I'm not going to get into to the old Hebrew and the old Greek words because I don't know too much about that, but I'm, I'm just um, letting you know about this. Uh, so if you want to go do some more study on the topic, you can. Right now, my main focus is just showing you how how um, Jesus is God and, and Jesus is eternal. There is no beginning and no end to Jesus. 
So, but you know, let's not make this too complicated. Let's go back to the New Testament and uh, we're going to go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews right now. Um, where am I at? Hebrews. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 5 through 9. And um, I want you to uh, focus in on verse 8 there, but we're going to start in verse 5. Uh, the Bible says, Hebrews 13, 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee, so that we may, be, uh, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Look at this, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, not uh, which not have profited them that have been occupied therein. I just wanted to uh, touch in on that. Verse 8 it says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, Jesus Christ is past, present, and future. Right? He's eternal. He doesn't change. He's the same God that he was in the Old Testament that he is in the New Testament. And he's the same God that will be after, uh, he, uh, in, the, in the end times and... Um, what do you call it? The uh, what comes next? Can't think of the word right now. But anyway, um, hold your place here in Hebrews, and I want to show you something in Deuteronomy. So hold your place here. Keep your finger in Hebrews. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-one. So it's near the end of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-one, and we're going to read verse six. Look at verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, 6. The Bible says, Be strong and of good and of good courage. Sorry. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that, that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This is a quote. If you go back to Hebrews and you look at uh um, verse, um, where is it? Verse 6, uh, where he says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. When you look back at um, verse 31, uh, where were we? Verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee. That doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Oh, I'm sorry, it was verse 5. <laughs> I, I apologize. Verse 5, there we go. If you look at verse 5, he quotes this verse. Uh, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath saith, or he, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So he's saying, hey, look, Jesus told us this in the Old Testament. And then again, he tells us, remember what Jesus said now? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is our, um, uh, the writer of Hebrews here, which we don't know who, who the author is. But he's, he's going back to Deuteronomy saying, hey, look, Jesus told us this way back then. right? I will never leave thee or forsake thee. Now we're going to look more, about, more on this topic next week. I just wanted to give you a, a sample right now to see that Jesus is not just in the in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's in the Old Testament. He's in the New Testament. He's all throughout the Bible because Jesus is eternal. This whole book is about Jesus. <clears throat> it's not just in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's eternal. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the whole. <laughs> he's the whole thing. And because um, there's some people out there who will get distracted by the words of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Um, sometimes uh, you'll get a Bible like this one where the words of Christ are in red. Words of Christ are in red letters. And people think that, oh, well, that's the most important part of the Bible. That's 
Uh, some people actually only read the words of Jesus in red. They don't care about the rest of the Bible. I, I mean, it's it's crazy because you, you need to read the whole Bible because Jesus is throughout the whole Bible, just like uh, we just saw. They quoted Jesus in Deuteronomy. But my point is this, is, is Jesus is God, right? He's in the Old Testament. He's in the New Testament. And I just wanted to kick this series off by explaining how um, Jesus was from the beginning, um, and he's going to go to the end. I mean, it, it's not just his earthly life, okay? Um, although this series will uh, focus mostly on his earthly life, Jesus is way more than just um, what we're going to talk about when he came in the flesh, okay? That's that's what I mean uh, about going back to the beginning of Jesus' life. But remember, Jesus is eternal. He's our He's our Savior. He's our he's our Christ, he's our Messiah, and and he's a king. He's a king like no other king, right? He can't be defeated. There have been many powerful kingdoms on this earth, empires, nations, who thought, you know, that they would never fall. You know, our nation could never fall. We are the great empire of Rome or or whatever. You know, um, Jesus promised us that one day he's gonna come back, he's gonna return. And he's going to set up an earthly kingdom that will never fall. That will have no end. That's how great of a king he is. He's undefeatable. He'll always protect us. He'll always be honest, fair, just, and loving. And he's never going to leave us nor forsake us, like the Bible says. He won't fail us. He won't lie to us. Now, the first time Jesus came, he came as a lamb, all right, to sa- as a sacrifice for our sins, but... He was crucified. He was put to death for uh, something he didn't do. His soul descended into hell. And then three days and three nights, he was he was in hell. And then he resurrected physically from the grave. And, and he defeated death. He defeated, he conquered it for us. He, he saved us. He died for our sins. He, he, uh, he took the punishment we deserve upon himself. And, 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 he, and then he ascended back into heaven after he appeared to uh, multitudes of people and his apostles. You know, our, our, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ is amazing, okay? He's a, he's a great God. He's, he's, he's literally one of a kind, and uh, there's no other God like him who, um, who would die for his people and, and become like his people, come from a kingdom uh, down here to earth and, and live like us and eat our food and and things like this, live among sinners, die for us sinners, and and uh, so he's he's kind, he's merciful, he's powerful, and 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 I think that's what compels people, uh, including myself, to do great things for God, you know, because because he died for us, he loved us, he loved us first, that's why we love him, right? Because he first loved us, he ascended back into heaven, but he told us before he left, before he went back to heaven, he he promised us that one day. I'm going to return again. And the second time, he's not going to come back as a lamb to be slain. He's going to come back as a mighty warrior, as the lion of Judah, the Bible says, fierce, a defender of the weak. And and he's going to be feared by people who live unrighteously. Okay, Jesus Christ is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to have... This series preached on him. He's he's worthy to have a 12 sermons uh, series preached in his name, definitely. He's worthy to be preached on every single day of the week. Amen? Um, but I'm, I just wanted to kick this series off this way and uh, remind us that, you know, Jesus Christ is worthy to be celebrated. He's worthy to be worshipped and praised. Um, he's the king that's worthy to die for. Okay? A priest that you can trust, and he's a righteous judge. There's no other man in history who can say such a thing, who has served as a judge, as a high priest, and as a king. All throughout the Old Testament, there were three positions of high authority, okay, of, of titles of nobility, if you will, of, of recognition. You have the title of the king, who is in charge of the whole nation. Okay, you have the title of the judge who, who is in charge of executing judgment on, on wicked people and, and upholding righteousness and protecting the innocent. And then you had the title of 
of high priest, okay, who held the responsibility of, of being somewhat of like a mediator between God and man, right, reconciling people back to God and, and performing um, the, the, uh, the ordinances of, of sacrifice, animal sacrifices and sin offerings and things like this for people to um, reconcile themselves back to God. But Jesus Christ is the only one who qualified for each position. And not only did he qualify, but he's the only one who could perform the duty perfectly, without any flaws, no mistakes. He just does it. He's the perfect priest, the perfect king, um, and the perfect judge. Now, usually... Um, we look at people in our life and we could see people rise to the top of their field, whatever it is. Maybe they become a great doctor or a great lawyer or, or a great warrior or, um, or a scholar or a politician or whatever it is, right? But, but usually people can't hold more, um, more than one title. You know, they might make it to two titles. Um, I, I think of like the heavyweight champion of the world, the greatest fighter of all, right? Um, he he has a, he holds his title fight, but he's only good at that one sport, right? Boxing or or whatever it is, or baseball or or whatever, right? Whatever whatever he excels at, he can only do one category. But here we have Jesus Christ, the man who is the top of all three of the highest um, positions you can hold. He's he's our judge. He's our high priest. And he's our king, our king of kings, Jesus Christ, our savior. I mean, what more, what more can I say? What more can I say? I, I know this introduction is just an introduction. It's brief. Um, like I said, I don't claim to be an expert on Jesus, but I, I did want to do this series to cover some of the fundamentals. And, and um, I will say this, that uh, I love Jesus, you know, and, and I know that he loves me and I know that he loves you watching this video, and, and if this series can just get us a little bit closer to Jesus, just have a little closer walk with thee, you know, then that's exciting. That excites me. So friends, let's do this. Let's uh, let's try not to get distracted with the glitter and the gold and, and all the presents uh, that, that's coming um, and the material things that um, come along with the season of December and, 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 and the closing of, um, and Christmas is coming along, you know, the world's trying to promote materialism and, and, and things like that. Um, and I just wanted to stay focused on, on serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, cause it, it doesn't cost a, a dime to serve the Lord Jesus. Um, it really doesn't. And to, and to obey his commandments and do what he says, but, uh, he's worthy. He's a worthy King. He's a, He's a righteous judge, and um, I hope I hope uh, this series could be a blessing to you guys, because uh, Jesus is amazing. But that's my message for the day, guys. Um, next week we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus in the Old Testament, and uh, like we like I we touched on briefly today, we saw how Jesus is quoted in the Old Testament, so Jesus is in the beginning. But we're going to take a little more in depth look at that. But for now. That's my message for the day. <laughs> um, let's just remember that Jesus is worthy. Okay, let's let's praise him. But that's my message for the day, guys. God bless you. God bless this message. And uh, tune in um, next time for uh, part two of the of this series, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Amen, and God bless you wherever you are. And uh, whatever you're going through today, in, um, in Jesus' name, God bless you. Um, as always, we're going to close in prayer, and then we're going to have a, uh, a reading from, I believe, uh, John. Yep, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. God bless you guys. Have a great day. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, your son, Jesus. We just... Uh, we just want to have a closer walk with him, Lord. Lord, uh, uh, things just uh, are going crazy at, at this time of the year. A lot of materialism going on. Lord, and I just ask that you keep us focused on Jesus. The more we learn about him, the more uh, amazing 
He is to us. And Lord, I ask that you keep blessing us with more knowledge about him and getting us closer to him. Father, uh, this holiday season uh, can bring distractions. So uh, the devil's trying to keep us away from getting closer to Jesus, Lord, and tempting us to do wrong. I ask that you keep us away from those distractions and keep us safe from any harm that people will uh, try to do to us. And Lord, I pray that you uh, deliver us from any temptations that we have to get away from our Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you uh, judge our enemies swiftly, um, keep them far away from us, keep us uh, protected. Lord, uh, send your angels to um, be with us, Lord, and, and fight this good fight with us in this holiday season so we can continue to honor Jesus Christ, your Son, the most holy and praiseworthy, greatest Son ever and ever, Lord. I can't uh, praise Him enough. Lord, we can, we can brag about how great He is and how much He's done for us all, all the way to next year, Lord, and forever and ever. And That's just how great He is. Lord, I ask that you uh, just use us through this holiday season to praise God and have those who haven't known God yet, who haven't come to Jesus, Lord, help them see uh, see our praise and and be reconciled to Him, Lord, and and get to know Him. Lord, I ask that you can you bless this series and you use this series to get people closer to Jesus and uh, bring us all closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Our closing uh, reading is going to be uh, from John chapter 17 here. If you want to read with me. This uh, closing reading is um, a prayer that Jesus prayed when he was on earth here with us. And he prayed for us. And we're going to read the, uh, the whole chapter, the whole prayer. God bless you guys. Have a great day. These words... <clears throat> Uh, excuse me, John chapter 17. The Bible says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, uh, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gave, gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all these things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I came out of thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and thy world hate, uh, hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou, sh that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. 
And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be as one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. Amen.